What is up, Job Squad? How are you guys doing? Welcome back. It's been a few weeks. Um, I am aware of that. Um, I started a new job, and so I'm just getting the schedule down. But we're back. We're alive, and we're cooking, and we're rooking, and we're booking the show. How about that for a rhyme for you, huh? Today, Monday Night Raw. It's a bit of a slower-paced one. I've talked to management. Pete Dunn, Dolph Ziggler, after their backstage brawl, have both been suspended for the week. However, without pay. Suspended without pay tonight, Monday Night Raw. However, they have both been given a title opportunity at the upcoming pay-per-view Halloween Havoc. This is the go-home show, by the way. I keep saying by the way. I gotta stop saying by the way. Um, but this is the go-home show, so the next show is SmackDown, then it's Halloween Havoc, Pete Dunne, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Intercontinental title is on the line in that one. John Cena, however, he will be facing AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar, possibly a fourth member, I will get to that soon, uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship. So here tonight, John Cena, he's got a, he's got a bit of a warm-up match going into the pay-per-view against Buddy Murphy. Not to not to put Buddy Murphy down, but this is a warm up for John Cena. Uh, a couple of simulations here: Zelina Ve or Zelina Vega versus Rusev, uh, Andrade versus Rusev, Elias versus Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre. A warm up match for him. Well, maybe not warm up, but uh, he's gonna get a shot at uh, Bobby Lashley here. Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman, who uh, who was screwed out of that match, right? Um, and then we've got Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle in a submission match. Just to give you a little context here, because some of you may. May not remember what happened on the previous show. Uh, Kurt Angle was he returned to team up with AJ Styles against Brock Lesnar and John Cena. Kurt Angle was actually the one to tap out Brock Lesnar. Now, if Kurt Angle taps out Brock Lesnar once again, he will be inserted into that World Heavyweight Title match at Halloween Havoc, making it a fatal four-way. So, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and let's jump into the action. John Cena versus buddy murphy all right once again uh as you guys can obviously notice the arena has still not been updated i mean the game has not been updated to fix the arena still it's amazing because i feel like i've taken quite a bit of time off but uh arena still don't work so we're still going with the default arena but um here comes the man the myth the legend if you will i guess i don't know I don't know what I'm even trying to say anymore. Weighing it at 277 million pounds. John Cena. This man is hell bent on beating Ric Flair's record of 16 World Heavyweight Championships. If John Cena wins at Halloween Havoc, that record will officially be broken with John Cena's 17th world title victory. He's just trying to prove to himself, man. He's he's gone to Hollywood and he's since come back. And I've said it, and I've, I've I've said it once. I'll say it again. He's come back and he's trying to prove he ain't soft. He's trying to prove that he still got it, and he's gonna he's gonna prove it at Halloween Havoc by winning his 17th world title. We're gonna. We're, I mean, come on. We gotta watch the whole thing or what? You know? Come on. Let's get to Buddy Murphy here. Here we go. A rising up and coming star. Uh, here on Monday Night Raw, former cruiserweight champion, none other than Buddy Murphy here. I, I, matches like these, they're always interesting. You can't. Um, I hate when they do the intros because then it, it really throws me off. I gotta maybe I should turn it off. Um, but matches like this where it's you know where you've got a very established guy like John Cena going up against a, a, a guy like Buddy Murphy, whom we all know, right? We all know who Buddy Murphy is. We know what he's done. But he's not on the same level. He's not of the caliber of John Cena. But if he wins tonight, I mean, all of a sudden he's his name is 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 in the books, right? His name is going to start being mentioned. Everybody's going to start going, yeah, that Buddy Murphy guy. Yeah, I, he beat John Cena. I like that Buddy Murphy guy. He, if he could beat John Cena, I bet he could beat Brock. I bet he can beat AJ, Kurt Angle, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. You name it, I bet Buddy Murphy can do it. You know, one victory 
can change your life. And Buddy Murphy, is he, he's got the opportunity here tonight to change his life. Skip the little, uh, the little things there. And we are underway as the bell is rung. A lock up here in the center of the ring. Buddy Murphy pulling John Cena in. Headlock off the ropes goes Bud. Off the ropes again. Shoulder tackle. No. John Cena not going down from that one. Snapmare. Down goes Buddy Murphy. Seating, sitting position. Oh, he, he reverses out of that one. He saw what John Cena was going for. Hit an elbow into the midsection. Here we go. Nice swing. Oh, okay. A little extra, little extra swing on that swinging neck breaker there by Buddy. He eats a, a headbutt. Shoulder tackle there by John Cena. Just trying to prove, hey, bud, you tried to go for a shoulder tackle on me. It didn't quite work. I'm a little too big, a little too strong. I can hit you with one better. Big time suplex there by Buddy Murphy. I'll tell you right now. As a John Cena fan, <laughs> I guess I can't really say that. I, when I was growing up, I was a John Cena fan, right? Like, I'd say I was a John Cena fan. Um, God, when did I stop being a John Cena? Maybe... 2008? I guess, wait, what is going on now? And... Uh, Buddy Murphy, uh, he, he's taking the action to John Cena here, and Baron Corbin's music just hit. And now Cena's up. Oh, what was that? What the hell was that? What What is going on here with uh, Baron Corbin trying to distract Buddy Murphy? I... I, I, I don't quite understand that one, but uh, perhaps maybe a, a, a technical difficulty or, or maybe Baron Corbin was actually trying to get into that. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's The Undertaker. I don't know. You know, you never know. Maybe it's... Uh, I, I, I was trying to think of a random person and I just... I couldn't even name another wrestler in that moment. Just now, I tried to name any other wrestler in the WWE and I just couldn't do it. Maybe it's Ricochet, right? Just playing... Baron Corbin's music, and now an AA. That's got to spell the end here for Buddy Murphy. One, two, and no, Buddy Murphy still able to kick out there just before three. The Baron Corbin, oh, and now he's going to try to stretch him out here. John Cena going to try to try to injure Buddy Murphy further. Further put on some pain here, but Buddy Murphy, he's going he's gonna to be able to punch John Cena in the freaking face. Take him down here. I don't know. I still think that uh, there's a pretty good chance that the, the Baron Corbin distraction is going to cost Buddy Murphy this matchup here tonight. As it's, I, I mean, it really did turn the tide. If, if you look at the way things are going at this point, it did turn the tide. Anyways, before I was so rudely interrupted by Baron Corbin, I was talking about my, my fandom for John Cena. I was a fan of John Cena, man. When he first came in and he was doing the rapping gimmick, I would say... I see, I want to say up until 2009 because I went to the Royal Rumble in 2009, but I don't know if I was still rooting for John Cena or not. There's no way. I don't think I was. I think by that point, I was I was kind of fed up with John Cena. I was a little bit done. Um, so maybe 2008? But I must have been rooting. Like, he debuted in what, 04? So I must have been rooting for him up until, like, 06. That's like two years. So, I, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Anyways. As a John Cena fan, <laughs> it's nice to have John Cena back here on Monday Night Raw in action. I don't. That was that was a that was a really fake uh, that was a really fake uh, sentence there that I just put together. Buddy Murphy, man, he is trying to put together a win here though, and it's uh, win or lose by Buddy Murphy. I think that the showing he has put on against a one of the best of all time. He might actually win the match still, but uh, d despite the fact that he's facing one of the greatest of all time, right, and Buddy Murphy is still a bit young, a, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say green, inexperienced, I will say, uh, you know, a bit inexperienced, less, less experienced than John Cena, let's put it that way, and then there was also the Baron Corbin distraction, for all three of those things to be going on in this matchup for Buddy Murphy, and he's still putting up one hell of a fight, I, I think it's an impressive showing by this young man here, and and, and it's gotta it's gotta speak well to to the future of Monday Night Raw and 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 Buddy Murphy. I think there's a world title run for Buddy Murphy in the future. Who knows? You know, who really knows? Who would have thought that Seth Rollins would ever be world champion?
Certainly not me. I thought Dean Ambrose was going to get there first. I like Dean Ambrose more than I like the other two from Shield. And just like that, Buddy Murphy has to tap. Has to tap out. Sorry. I just burped like three times in a row. John Cena able to tap out Buddy Murphy. Uh, I don't want to say an easy match. John Cena definitely had his, his hands full here against Buddy Murphy here tonight. Uh, the distraction. Maybe Baron Corbin and John Cena are working together, you know? Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Baron Corbin distracting Buddy Murphy. Perhaps it was Baron. I'm assuming it's Baron. And uh, Baron Corbin or uh, Buddy Murphy still able to put up a fight. John Cena, though, victorious as we all kind of assumed. All right, guys, let's get into some simulations. All right, here we go. Simulation time. Andrade versus Rusev. Random Rusev, victorious. Elias versus Roman Reigns. I just want to point out, when I was going through the matches, I was like, I, w I was stopped here, and I was like, wait, why does Drew McIntyre have two matches? And then I, I very quickly realized that they are drastically different in terms of a few different things. I guess when you do this, you can really tell. Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns, very distinctly different. I don't think there's a single thing that's similar about them. I mean, like, everything is different, right? Like, he's got a headband and he's bald. He's got a full head of hair. Roman's got the beard going on, freshly shaved, right? Bobby Lashley's a black guy. Roman Reigns is, is, is not black, obviously. Um, Shirtless, vest, right? Like, even, like, the, the elbow pads there, no elbow pads. Anyways, what am I doing? I'm just like, what is this? What is going on right now? Uh, all right, Elias versus Roman Reigns. Elias loses. Uh, Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. Probably crucial for Drew McIntyre to get the victory going into Halloween Havoc. Build up a little bit of confidence going into a, a title defense, especially a, a title defense where you don't need to be pinned. Triple threat. I just realized we've got two triple threat matches already booked for Halloween. It's, it's the triple threat pay-per-view. I might have to rematch it or rename it. Here we go. Random winner, Drew McIntyre beating Bobby Lashley. Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman. Here we go. Seth Rollins victorious. Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle. Submission match. That's next. All right, it is uh, main event time. <laughs> My God, this matchup right here. Uh, if you guys remember back in SmackDown, they had a one hour long Iron Man match. Uh, they, they they main evented SmackDown. Submission match. Hit the, hit the intro. Brock Lesnar. I'm telling you right now, there was a debate in my mind when I booked this this match for this this show of just saving it for the pay-per-view because this is a perfect pay-per-view match. But Brock Lesnar, he was the initial number one contender, was he not? Am I correct in saying that? And now he might he had a one-on-one -on -one match. Then all of a sudden, John Cena's in the match. Next thing you know, maybe Kurt Angle's in the match. Hello? How is that fair to Brock? So it, we had to do the match here on Monday Night Raw, but, I mean, is anybody complaining? What a main event. Submission match. Kurt Angle tapping out Brock Lesnar last week. Oh, there's the pyro, baby. Kurt Angle on the comeback trail. He was one of those men in that, in that, uh, in that number one contenders match. And if you guys remember what I said then, it's that Kurt Angle, he, he's old, right? He's past his prime. He might not have it anymore, but he believes he has one last run as world champion in him. I think he proved that last week when he tapped out Brock Lesnar. Sure, it was a tag team match, but I, I, ooh, uh, hello? Who was the last person to tap out Brock Lesnar? Can you name it for me? I don't think you can. I can't. I, I, I honestly can't. Was it before? I don't think he's been tapped out since he's come back from UFC. I mean, like, I'm talking since he came back at that one Monday Night Raw and he's been back doing part-time stuff ever since. I don't think he's been tapped out. So who's the last one? It might have been Kurt Angle to be the last. Has, Kurt Angle, has Brock Lesnar ever been tapped out? And Kurt Angle did it last week. So here we go. Kurt Angle, he's going to get right into things here. Belly-to-belly -belly suplex to start things off. That's the exact intensity that I would expect out of Kurt Angle, the three eyes, intensity, integrity, and intelligence, and Kurt Angle is displaying all three of them right here, right now, as he tries to choke out Brock Lesnar. But he can't get it done there. 
<coughs> I'm like, <coughs> I got a cough, sorry. <clears throat> I got a little too excited. I started yelling too much, and now I got a scratch in my throat. Um, there's a you still got it sign for Kurt Angle. What a what a what a what a fan that is. Tap or snap coming up in the crowd. I, I I'm I'm really rooting. You know, as a, as a as a commentator, as a play-by-play -play guy, uh, I am supposed to be completely unbiased. But uh, I'll tell you right now, completely complete bias for Kurt Angle here tonight in this matchup. I want Kurt Angle to win more than I've wanted anything in my entire life. That's that's not true. But I really want Kurt Angle to win this match, man. I think Kurt Angle, as far as the the top contenders go for the world title. I think Kurt Angle is perhaps the most fan favorite, right? You've got John Cena who's really just in it to prove that he's not a Hollywood star and he wants that 17th world title. Brock Lesnar, who really likes Brock Lesnar. Kurt Angle, he just wants he just wants one last run. He wants one last, you know, one last hurrah before he rides off into the sunset. And how do you not get behind a guy like that? I'll tell you right now. I've taken all of my eggs. And they tell you not to put all your eggs in one basket, but I'm taking all of my eggs. And in front of me, I've got four baskets. I've got Brock Lesnar's basket. I've got John Cena's basket. I've got an AJ Styles basket, and I've got a Kurt Angle basket. I'm telling you right now, I am picking up all of my eggs. I am cradling them in my arms, and I am dropping them all into the Kurt Angle basket. Because that's where I'm at. I am a Kurt Angle fan through and through currently. Now and forever. All right. Maybe I'm getting a little carried away here as Brock Lesnar is absolutely beating the hell out of Kurt Angle. <laughs> he is beating down Kurt Angle in such a way uh, that it's it's uh, it's kind of hard to watch. But at the end of the day, Brock Lesnar is not going to win this match by pinning Kurt Angle. He, he he's got to tap out. Oh, was that a? Oh, that was a midsection kick. All right. I thought that was a low blow for a second, but Kurt Angle, I don't know if that was that a, a flying forearm, a crossbody, I don't know what that what that was quite called, but uh, Kurt Angle able to come right back into this matchup here. I would say things have been kind of even. I mean, Brock Lesnar, when he starts getting rolling, I think it's scary simply because he has such a, uh, such a size advantage. Right, but it's like I think Kurt Angle, he was on offense just as long as Brock Lesnar was, and now it's back to Kurt Angle. Um, I think it just, it's a matter of size, you know, size, age, and speed, which of which Brock Lesnar has all three, but does he have intensity? Yes, y yes he does. Does he have intelligence? Yes he does, but I don't think he's on the same in, same level as, as Kurt Angle. Integrity? Definitely not. That is Kurt Angle's thing. Kurt Angle is beating Brock Lesnar in two of the three eyes, so although Brock Lesnar, he has the speed, he has the size, and he has the sage. I was trying to make a three S's, but that's whatever. He has the age. Kurt Angle, he has two of the three eyes. Not all three, but what are you going to do? He's He lost one with age. <laughs> he had to. Intensity? And I'm not saying Kurt Angle doesn't have intensity because, of course, of course, Kurt Angle has intensity. Look at the way he came out. Started this matchup with intensity. Who was more intense at the beginning of the match than Kurt Angle? The referee? I don't think so. It was Kurt Angle, the most intense man in the room. Starting the match off. I said the match off. I was going to say match off, but then it came out as match off and match off. It's whatever. Anyways, Brock Lesnar back on offense here as he's tossing Kurt Angle around like a sack of taters. A sack of potatoes. He's tossing Kurt Angle around like now they're on the outside of the ring here. I'm not quite sure on the rules of a submission match, but it doesn't look like there's countouts, so I don't think there's any disqualifications, which is interesting. When was the last time there was a submission? I guess there was one recently, right? Wasn't there? I want to say it was like Natalia and Lacey Evans had a submission match. To be perfectly honest with you guys, I don't watch that much WWE anymore. I've been a, I've been watching a lot of uh, other wrestling. Uh, I don't. I've been watching a lot of AEW. Anyways, uh, I've been watching some NXT. I haven't watched. I'll tell you right now, the priority of things that I watch go AEW, NXT, Monday Night Raw, um, literally anything else. Um, then it's like, I'd rather eat broken glass and then SmackDown. SmackDown's, uh, SmackDown is at the end of the list of priorities. Like, if I can, um, let's see, what is something that, like, I would hate to do? If I could, like, um, 
I don't know, like, clean, right? If I was, like, if I sat down and I was like, all right, I can watch SmackDown or I can clean. I'd be like, yeah, I think I'll clean today, you know? Uh, I think I'll get some cleaning done. That's the way, uh, that's the way things go, but, uh, Brock Lesnar is in full control of this matchup at this point, and, uh, it's rather disappointing because I was rooting for Kurt Angle, I told you guys that, but right now, Brock Lesnar is uh, taking the fight to Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle can barely even stand on his own two feet, kick to the midsection, and he kick to the chest, another kick to the chest, and down goes Angle. He tried to put up a fight right there, and he just couldn't do it. Now Brock Lesnar, oh, he just throws him into the freaking post, into that LED post. Back first into that. I, I mean, that's got to hurt. Come on, Brock. Let's get him back into the ring. Can we, I mean, finish the thing off. You don't got to prove your point. I think Brock Lesnar is, is trying to take his aggressions. Out. Oh, and see, that's what happens. That's what happens when you, t when you try to drag the match out. Kurt Angle now, he's digging deep here. And he's making a comeback, a big right hand. He's got Brock Lesnar reeling at this point. He has caught Brock Lesnar completely off guard. It was the Brock Lesnar show. Brock was not expecting for Kurt Angle to come back in this match. And now all of a sudden, Kurt Angle's back in this match. If he could just get Brock into the ring and put a put an ankle lock on him or, or, or a headlock or something. If he could put some sort of submission hold on Brock Lesnar, I think he might have a victory. But he's got to get him in the ring. Because being outside of the ring, I don't think wins the match, guys. Guys! Guys, take the match back into the freaking ring! I, I don't think they can hear me. Hey! Guys! 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 Hey, guys, can we... Uh, guys, hey. Can we take the match back into the freaking ring, please? I wonder if they're ever going to go back into the ring. Oh, and Kurt Angle... Throwing Brock Lesnar back into the ring. He's finally sees his opportunity to win the match. Hello. As he throws Brock Lesnar back into the ring, picks him back up. I think Kurt Angle... I, I hate to say I think Kurt Angle's concussed, but right there. You saw him, he picked Brock Lesnar up, and it almost looked like he forgot what he was doing. As Kurt Angle rolls to the outside of the ring. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Are they inside? The, no, they're outside of the ring. Okay. I looked down because I was so disappointed with that. But I think Kurt Angle might be concussed. As he gets face first into the post, Brock Lesnar throws him into the post there. Ooh. Throwing, uh, Kurt Angle throwing Brock into the, into the rinks. If I had to choose one thing to, to go head first into, I think I would take the post. I don't know why, but, like, the seal steps, like, right, like, those gotta hurt more, I would think. If it, if the if the post was still like that steel post instead of the LED screen, because I think the LED screen have, has a little more give than the steel post. Like that steel post, I I'd rather take the steps over the steel post. But with the the LED post, I would take the LED post more. It just seems like it's so hollow that it's got some more give to it. Brock Lesnar uh, firing up here. I don't know what that is, but I think I gotta disable it. <laughs> All right, uh, Brock Lesnar now picking up Kurt Angle inside of the ring as we go on to a three-hour-long matchup here. Ooh, big right hand there by Kurt Angle. He's able to reverse Brock Lesnar. But Brock Lesnar able to reverse there and a belly-to-belly. -belly. No, Kurt Angle saw it coming. That is where the wrestling experience, not to say that Brock Lesnar doesn't have any, but one of these guys has won an Olympic gold medal, and one of them has it. And the one that has is Kurt Angle. All right? That's where that extra experience comes into play right there as he was able to reverse Brock Lesnar's maneuver and take control of this matchup once again. I just wish that they would stay inside of the ring. Stay in the ring! Stay in the ring! Guys, you gotta win the match in the ring, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong because it's been a while since anybody's even had a submission on, even though it's a submission match this game it makes so much sense should i just sing about how awful wwe 2k20 is this game is broken this game sucks this game isn't fun i wish i could make arenas i wish i could create stars i wish i could do just about anything but i can't because it's broken 
I can't because it sucks. Hey, 2K, fix your game because it's really lame. Bom, bom, bom. Hey, now, let's get... Okay, anyways, uh, replay here on the F5. That's not going to win the match, though, so let's continue. <laughs> let's keep it moving here. How do I... Can I skip it? All right, six replays for the old F5. Both men are absolutely beaten to death as Brock Lesnar. He's going to try to knock out Kurt Angle, but uh, the match is a submission match. Did anybody tell the, Did anybody tell Brock Lesnar what the rules were going into this matchup? Did anybody say, hey, Brock, so you got a submission match tonight? Or did somebody just say, hey, Brock, you got a match tonight, and now Brock thinks he's going to just kill Kurt Angle? I guess if you kill your opponent, you win. But I think he would go to jail, so inevitably you end up losing in a way, I guess? I don't know. I don't think Brock has had a single submission on the entire match. Um, Kurt Angle now reversing the action back into his... Uh, okay, now Brock Lesnar reversing that right hand by Kurt Angle. Kick to the midsection is reversed by Kurt Angle as he takes down Brock Lesnar. Will Kurt Angle go for a submission? No, he's going to go ahead. He's going to pick up Brock Lesnar. He's going to go for a German suplex just to show him how it's done. Oh! He's going to do what Brock Lesnar does. Although, Kurt Angle is the one that actually made this famous. Right? Wait, was Kurt Angle doing the... Th I think Kurt Angle was doing three Germans before Eddie started doing the three Amigos, right? Am I crazy? I don't know. No, I don't remember, I don't remember who did what. Big right hand there by Kurt Angle into some more Germans. No. They teleport into each other's place there. Um, interesting. Brock Lesnar, though. Oh, my God. Is Brock Lesnar even alive anymore? He looked like he was about to pass out, but then he just gets that second win, and all of a sudden he's dropping a knee across the chest of Kurt Angle. Looks like he's trying to think of what he wants to do next. Uh, can I give a suggestion, big guy? Perhaps a submission hold in this submission match. I'll tell you right now, when I put this match together, this was kind of my biggest fear. Was uh, What if they just don't do submissions for three hours? And um, we are heading in that direction rather quickly. As Kurt Angle drags Brock Lesnar into the center of the ring. And now he grabs the ankle. And it's reversed. So Kurt Angle going for what I could only assume was the ankle lock. is uh, It was reversed by Brock Lesnar. It's now Brock, the well-known submission specialist. Picks up Kurt Angle and drops him to the mat. I don't know if you guys have recognized this, but when matches go on for like an extended period of time, I get a little annoyed. I get, I get slightly annoyed. And I'm not saying, like this one, honestly, this one hasn't even been going on for that long, but the lack of submissions. Kurt Angle, I think Kurt Angle put a submission on what? The first 10 seconds of the match? And has there been another submission since? I don't know. But it looks like maybe he's going for the ankle lock here. He grabs the ankle. Here we go. Kurt Angle, he's got the ankle lock in. This is what made Brock tap last week. Oh, he really cinches it in here. This could be it. Kurt Angle on his way to Halloween Havoc, on his way to a world title title match. Brock's got to tap. If Brock taps, it's over. Brock Lesnar, he taps. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle victorious here tonight. Kurt Angle wins his way in the very last match of the night, in the very last week, the very last episode hit the absolute last time Kurt Angle could absolutely get a shot at the world title at Halloween Havoc. He does it, he gets it done. Here tonight against Brock Lesnar, he taps him out twice. And in a fatal four-way match, I didn't even know he was busted open, but in a fatal four-way match, the champion doesn't need to be pinned or submitted. If Kurt Angle can tap Brock Lesnar out for a third time at Halloween Havoc, we've got a new World Heavyweight Champion. That could be the future that we are looking at. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this one, if you did... That's not what I usually say. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at JobberNation. This has been your boy, JobberNation. Bye.